Hi students, welcome back to another video. Um, in today's lesson, we will be talking about uh, chemical equations and how can we balance them. So let's jump straight into it. So um, by now you have you should have heard uh, about this term chemical equation quite a number of times. Okay, so uh, we have had a glimpse of this in lower sec science. So in uh, upper sec chemistry, we will um, continue to look at how chemical reactions can uh, be represented using a chemical equation. All right. So a chemical equation uh, will show us what happens in a chemical reaction. Okay. So it tells us quite a number of uh, things. Okay. So firstly, uh, we can find out which reactants and products are involved in the reaction. Okay, so we can uh, have a look at this orange box over here. So for instance, um, we have uh, seen sodium chloride right, many times by now, uh, which is an ionic compound. So for instance, if we want to form sodium chloride in the chemistry lab, we can react uh, elemental sodium as well as chlorine together. Uh, in order to form sodium chloride. Okay, so to represent this reaction, we can use uh, a word equation, right? So sodium plus chlorine to give us sodium chloride. Okay, so um, but as chemists, we uh, are able to represent this using uh, chemical symbols as well. Okay, uh, for a few reasons, lah, to save time, uh, to uh, to to represent it in, in a more succinct way, if you will. Okay, so uh, in a chemical react, uh, equation, you can tell which reactants and products are involved. Okay, so for instance, over here, Na, we know from the periodic table that this represents sodium. Uh, chlorine, uh, at room temperature and pressure, it, uh, it exists as a diatomic molecule, so it's Cl2, right? And then uh, sodium chloride, as we know, uh, ionic compound, it's NaCl. Okay? Then, uh, second piece of information that we are able to together from a chemical equation will be the relative amounts of the reactants and products. Okay, so this will be reflected um, using uh, via the coefficients. So, for instance, here you can see that there's uh, two moles of sodium, uh, one mole of chlorine, as well as one mole of sodium chloride. Okay, this, this concept on mole, uh, we will talk about it a bit more, uh, but at the moment you can just take it as uh, a coefficient uh, and it represents uh, the number of units of your reactants or your products. Okay, relative amounts. Uh, third piece of information that you can find out, okay, you can gather from this will be the physical states of the reactants and products in the reaction. Okay, so this is represented by the state symbols. So for instance, over here, uh, for sodium, at room temperature and pressure, it exists as a solid, right? So by now, we all know that sodium is a metal, it's an alkali metal. So sodium is solid, represented by S. Uh, chlorine is gas, right? So it's G. And then sodium chloride is an uh, ionic compound, our table salt. So again, it's S. Okay, so from a chemical equation, we can uh, know these things. So in order for us to get all the information that we want from a simple chemical equation, we first need to make sure that it is balanced. Okay, so um, what does a balanced chemical equation mean? So a balanced chemical equation, it must contain equal numbers of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. Okay, so um, in an equation we have for, for chemistry, in an equation it is, uh, there's always this uh, arrow that's being represented. Okay, so over here this, this part on both sides basically just means uh, the side that is on the left hand side of the arrow, then the other side is uh, the right hand side of the arrow. Okay, so the reactants, alright, they are written on the left hand side of the equation. Okay, so for instance, if you look at um, the chemical equation that is enclosed in this red color box, here we have uh, hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water. Okay, so the reactants in this case, which is on the left hand side of the equation, left hand side of the arrow, it will be hydrogen gas as well as oxygen gas. Okay, 
uh, whereas the products or in this case the product form which is water uh, is written on the right hand side of the equation okay so in order to balance the chemical equation right basically we add numbers to it okay the coefficients so the chemical equation is balanced by adding a number in front of the chemical formula this is the same as multiplying the formula by that number so this is very much like uh, math right so your coefficient is uh, on the left hand side of uh, let's say let's say let's say x right so if you want to have two units of your x then you just put uh, the number 2 the coefficient 2 next to x so that will be 2x okay so another component that is in a chemical equation will be the state symbols right as mentioned just now so um, basically they're just four so if your substance exists as a solid at room temperature and pressure then it will be a solid right so uh, using the symbol s if it's a gas then it will be g liquid it will be l Okay, then uh, if it is uh, aqueous solution, then we will use uh, the symbol AQ. Aqueous solution meaning your substance uh, has been dissolved in uh, a solvent. So, uh, for instance, water. Alright, if it has, uh, yeah, then you will use AQ. Okay. So now let's turn to the next page um, and look at some of the steps in which we can um, take in order to write a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so um, my personal suggestion is that for a start, uh, if you are not too familiar with how to write chemical equations, you uh, should always start from a word equation first. Okay, so uh, have a general idea of how, uh, or rather what is actually going on in that particular chemical reaction first, um, then you work your way through to writing out the balanced chemical equation. Okay. So step number one, um, first you need to be able to correctly write down the chemical formula of the reactants as well as the products. Okay, so again, on the left hand side, you write the reactants and then followed by the arrow and then the right hand side of the arrow, you write the products. Step number two, you will need to check that the number of atoms of each element in the formula on both sides of the equation uh, are the same. Okay, they need to be balanced. Then step three, balance the equation by adding the coefficient uh, in front of the chemical formula. Uh, in the case where the coefficient is one, then there is no need for you to write um, the number. Okay, so it's just like again in math, uh, if you see let's say x plus y, it is a given that it is one x plus one y. Alright, so coefficient if it's one, no need to write. Step number four, uh, which is the final step, once you are uh, confident that everything is okay, then you add in the state symbols to indicate the physical state of each reactant and product. Alright, so very quickly, let's look at question one uh, to, to run through with you what are the steps. Okay, so question one tells you to write the chemical equation for the reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen to form ammonia okay so um, yeah so this particular reaction right um, it also in this question is very straightforward right so uh, first start with our word equation like I said uh, for a start always go easy first so hydrogen plus nitrogen so these are your reactants to give you ammonia all right so uh, this particular reaction is a uh, very famous, uh, also a very important reaction. Actually, it's called the Haber process. We will look at this in uh, Sec 4 in greater detail. All right. So next step, or rather step one, write down the chemical formula of the reactants and products. Right. So in this case, we have hydrogen. Again, always have to ask yourself, uh, what does the substance exist as at room temperature and pressure? Okay. So uh, unless it is otherwise uh, mentioned in the question. So in this case, hydrogen exists as hydrogen gas, right? So hydrogen is in the air, uh, it's, uh, it's a gas, so H2, okay? So diatomic molecule, H2. Likewise for nitrogen, same thing, N2, okay, to form ammonia. So ammonia is also a gas at room temperature and pressure. Uh, the formula we are uh, familiar by now, right? We learned this in uh, covalent bonding, so NH3. Okay, 
Then step number two, check that the number of atoms of each element in the formula on both sides of the equation, they are balanced. So let's have a look at it. Okay. Okay, so in this case, oh, okay, I realize I kind of jump step here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, but just now verbally, I also mentioned, right? So you already know that hydrogen is a gas at room temperature and pressure, uh, likewise for nitrogen, and then also for ammonia. Okay, so, uh, I mean, this, the steps over here are really just a guide for you. Uh, but once you are very familiar with writing chemical equations and balancing them, actually all these things come very quickly. Lah, okay, yeah, okay, let's carry on. So we need to check whether um, the equation is balanced, right, on both sides. So let's have a look. Okay, so uh, currently at the moment we have H2, right, one unit of that, we have one unit of N2 and one unit of our product ammonia okay so if we want to count the number of atoms we will see that for hydrogen there is a 2h okay then 2n and then on the other side we have one nitrogen and three hydrogens okay so one look you can already see that at the moment it is not balanced right the number of atoms on the left hand side does not balance with that on the right hand side so over here what i'm going to do is uh Okay, balancing chemical equations is sometimes sometimes it's a trial and error kind of thing. Okay, so over here, if one look, I uh, look at it, I have two nitrogens over here on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side, I only have one, right? So, uh, basic knowledge of mathematics would uh, signal to me that I would perhaps need to add a coefficient two, so that I make it two nitrogens. Okay, so once we have done that, we have two nitrogens. Then that would also change the number of hydrogens that we have, right? So now it is 2 multiplied by 3 to give us 6 hydrogens. Okay? So, yeah. So we check back with uh, what we have on the left-hand side. So now, so now the number of nitrogens is equal, right? On the left-hand side, we have 2. On the right-hand side, we also have 2. Okay, so that is settled. So now let's look at hydrogen. Okay, so on the left hand side now we have two hydrogens but then the right hand side we have six okay so again basic mathematics will tell us that we will now need to take um, this two hydrogen multiply by a coefficient of three a factor of three okay so we will reflect this coefficient over here on the chemical equation and then we just do a final check okay let me just clean all this off right so do a final check on the left hand side, I have 6 hydrogens, 2 nitrogens versus the right hand side. Likewise, I also have 2 nitrogens, right? 2 times 1. And then I also have 6 hydrogens, 2 times 3. Okay, so this is how we get the balanced chemical equation. Alright, so that's uh, 2 marks. So 1 mark for uh, correct formula as well as uh, correct balancing of your chemical equation. And then the second mark usually goes to correct state symbols. Let's have a look at question 2. Write the chemical equation for the reaction of sodium with cold water. Okay, so uh, this particular reaction we have seen it before uh, in the chapter on periodic table as well as uh, metals. Okay, so sodium is an alkali metal. Uh, we have seen that uh, being an alkali metal, it is highly reactive. So even with uh, water that is uh, cold or room temperature, it is able to react readily, right? So the products form uh, sodium hydroxide as well as hydrogen gas. So this is the work equation, okay? So um, in order to translate this into chemical equation, first and foremost, we need to, again, be very familiar with the chemical formula, okay? So uh, sodium, again, uh, when it is in room temperature and pressure, it exists as a metal. So metals are solids, right? So uh, so sodium is Na, and then the state symbol is solid. Water, of course, is a liquid, H2O. Sodium hydroxide is uh, NaOH, right? It is uh, aqueous solution. Uh, so this part, again, remember your polyatomic N ion. These are the ones that you will need to uh, memorize in order to know uh, what is the charge that it has okay so hydroxide is OH minus so when it balances with Na plus it is uh, it forms a uh, NaOH all right then uh, hydrogen again it is H2 gas okay 
Okay, then uh, so now we come to the balancing part, right? So one look, we can tell that uh, it is not balanced. Okay, so again, a bit of try and error here and there. So generally, you will want to make sure that, uh, for example, over here, uh, water, right? H2O. Okay, there's two hydrogens, but then on the right hand side, there is three hydrogens. Okay, so usually if you encounter such a situation, uh, the general rule of thumb that I would suggest is uh, try to make it into a even number. Okay, or you could also try making uh, making it into the lowest common multiple. Okay, so in this case, if we have a look at it, all right, uh, I would want to put a two over here. Okay, to ensure that uh, now my number of oxygen uh, is also two on both sides. Okay, so coefficient two here, coefficient two here. Um, then you will notice that now I have two uh, two oxygens here, two oxygens on this side as well. Um, then for your hydrogen, it is also balanced, right? So on the left hand side now I have four hydrogens. Over on the right hand side also the same. So two hydrogens here plus two hydrogens here. That's four hydrogens. Okay, but uh, just the last part, if you check uh, the element sodium, now you need another two on the left hand side in order to balance. Like that. Okay, so yeah. And then before you move on to the next question, just do a quick check. Left hand side, you have two sodium, four hydrogens, two oxygens. And then right hand side, I have two sodium, two oxygen two hydrogen and then not forgetting this one another two hydrogen okay so if you add together actually it's the same uh, four hydrogens okay so then this is a balanced chemical equation for the reaction of sodium and cold water okay so again two marks first mark for uh, correct state symbols second mark for uh, balanced chemical equation with the correct chemical formula okay moving on to question three so question three is for you to do a bit of uh, hands-on, okay? So this is the part where you will try to balance uh, the following chemical equations uh, by filling in the corres corresponding coefficients uh, in, in, in these lines that are provided, okay? So uh, these reactions, let me have a look. Uh, okay, so uh, now you're at sec three. So um, most of these equations, you have not exactly learned it. Uh, yet okay but uh, definitely by sec 4 you, you would have seen everything okay so but um, just for the sake of uh, clarity purposes I guess uh, just to let you know so um, equation A is uh, methane being burned in oxygen to give you uh, carbon dioxide and water only so this is a combustion reaction B is um, Acid-based reaction, you have a zinc metal reacting with hydrochloric acid to give you a salt as well as hydrogen gas. This one you'll learn in uh, the topic of acids and bases. Uh, reaction C, uh, again this is a combustion reaction. In this case, we are combusting ethane. Okay. Then uh, D, this one you have seen before. This one is uh, bromine reacting with potassium iodide to give you potassium bromide as well as iodine. So uh, D is the one that you have already learned in SEC 3. This is a displacement reaction of uh, group 7 elements which are your halogens. Okay, so um, please pause this video for a while and then uh, go ahead and attempt these four questions. Practice. Uh, your skills on how uh, you balance chemical equations then once you are done you can come back to this video uh, and you can check your answers all right see you in a bit okay hi again so this is uh, the answers so I will say uh, question a B as well as D are quite straightforward um, so it doesn't quite require much trial and error okay so a sim simple ma manipulation by putting a coefficient to uh, and then trying to balance the other uh, elements would uh, generally quickly just give you these answers 
the one that probably uh, needs a bit more thinking and manipulating will be part C okay so um, yeah but as I mentioned general rule of thumb uh, will be to try as much as possible to uh, make the number uh, an even number okay so for instance uh, let's say uh, in this case oxygen right uh, so you in this case uh, the coefficient is 7 you notice that after you take 7 times 2 in total you have 14 oxygens okay then uh, likewise on the right hand side uh, over here there is 6 and then you plus 8 over here 6 plus 8 is 14 so uh, that's balance okay then of course you check for the rest Okay, so this will be it for this particular video. When we go back to class, we will definitely have more uh, opportunities to practice uh, balancing chemical equations. The next part of the notes uh, will be on writing ionic equations. Uh, for this part, we will do uh, at a later time uh, and also on a separate video. Okay, so that is it. I will see you back in school. Goodbye.